It has been a somber day in Lexington as the city logs its 41st homicide of the year. LEX 18 has been following this situation throughout the day. Coming up on our team coverage, we talk with detectives about the unsolved homicides in the city. Also, Lexington Mayor Linda Gordon about the violence. But first, let's take a deeper look at where the city's homicides are occurring. This map shows the three Lexington zip codes with the most homicides. As of today, there have been 13 homicides in the 40505 zip code. That's northeast portion of Lexington. The 40508 zip code is the downtown area. There have been eight homicides there this year, and six homicides have occurred in the 40504 zip code, which is in the western part of the city. However, the city's most recent homicide happened in a different portion of town. Officials were called to Yellowstone Parkway just before 9:10 this morning. That's near Mount Tabor Road in the 40517 zip code. Evening Edition's Sydney Darden has the latest details on the homicide and the victim's impact in the community he's leaving behind. She begins our team coverage. Several neighbors reported hearing gunshots around 9 o'clock this morning. Family members confirmed Brandon Walker was shot and killed in the parking lot outside his residence on Yellowstone Parkway. Police arrived to find his car riddled with bullets as they hope that security cameras outside his home will help the investigation. His death, the city's 41st homicide of the year. Walker is well known throughout the community as someone who spent countless hours mentoring young kids on and off the football field. As investigators gather more evidence, they hope to know more once the coroner can examine his body, as today's weather made that a little more difficult. Uh, the individual's death occurred outside. It's raining. Uh, he's in an open parking lot. Uh, we were as diligent as we possibly could be. Most people were simply too scared or too heartbroken to go on camera, but I spoke with several of Brandon's loved ones. They tell me that they hope that the security cameras that they have on his house are going to be very helpful to the police in this investigation. In the meantime, they say that they know that this is going to be a loss that doesn't just sting their family. A lot of people in the community are going to feel the loss of his presence for a very long time. In Lexington, Cindy Darden, LEX 18 News. As violence continues to surge in Lexington, tonight is the final fall surviving onward session of the year for families who have lost loved ones to homicides. The goal of the six week program is to provide families with resources and offer support. In the editions, Christiana Four continues our team coverage by going in depth on how the wait for answers is also impacting grieving families. The wait for answers for victims' families can take months and even years. It's the kind of pain and frustration victim advocates with the Lexington Police Department say they understand and empathize with. It's why they're hoping their resources and support can help. Sometimes the journey to justice is long. I just want justice, that's all. That's all I want. It's been almost two years for Lexington native Elijah Persley. Just not knowing what happened to him. His son Kobe Persley was 20 years old when he was shot and killed in February of 2021. And there has been no leads. Hopefully somebody will see something of his pictures on the polls. For the past month, he's been canvassing the Tates Creek neighborhood. Yeah, this is me, my money. This ain't no crime stoppers or nothing. To get justice for my son, you know what I'm saying? He deserves that, to find out who did it. His family, one of 21 others, still waiting for someone to be held responsible for their loved one's murder in 2021 in Lexington. Seven families are waiting for answers for murders that happened in 2020. Sometimes the detectives know right away, you know, who um, committed the crime and they're able to charge them. Um, sometimes we know, but maybe they're on the run. So. Um, but then you also have the court process, which takes a long time. Robin Anderson has been a victim's advocate for more than 20 years. She says the process and the pain of waiting is one of the main reasons Lexington police restarted surviving onward sessions for families who've lost loved ones. We invite fa homicide families to come in and talk with us and we bring in um, guest speakers to talk to the families. We always have food and fellowship and let the families kind of talk. 
While it has been helpful, Anderson also understands the frustration many families still feel. And I know a common complaint that I've heard is, you know, I call and I don't hear back for a long time. Why might it feel like police are just giving them the runaround or we're working on it? Why might it feel that way? I'm sure that they, families feel that way. It is extremely frustrating to go through this process when maybe like a case is unsolved, um, a cold case. Um, you know, you want to call to see if there's any updates. And it, it's even disheartening to the detective that has to say, I'm sorry, we don't have any updates yet. You know, I promise if we do get anything, I will let you know, but we just don't have anything at this time. The detectives are always working cases. They never stop. She hopes their sessions show how much they do care and are trying to get answers. There is somebody out there that probably knows what happened. Because she knows for many, the weight only gets heavier the longer it's carried. Christiana Ford, Evening Edition. There are several groups across Lexington focused specifically on victims. We'll include more information on that when you click on this story on our website at lex18.com. Well, inside City Hall, one of Mayor Linda Gorton's biggest challenges has been helping to reduce homicide and other violent crimes across the city. And that's one of the many topics she discussed one-on-one -on -one, one week after being re-elected in a landslide. Evening Edition's Michael Burke rounds out our team coverage with this interview. One week ago, the people of Lexington essentially sent a mandate to City Hall. I thought I would do well, but not that well. Because she said you just don't know truly what voters are thinking at the moment they cast. She won 71% of those votes following a first term littered with landmines she had to navigate, including a pandemic, a summer of nightly protests, several harsh winter weather events, and a record-setting homicide rate, which led to, if not forced her, into developing and launching One Lexington. The mentor program has assisted with a reduction in youth homicides and more. Violent crime, which includes a lot of different things, is also right now down 2% from last year this time. That's, it doesn't sound like much, but given what's happening across the country, it's a lot. So there's room for improvement, but she can say that about almost any facet of the city. There's a lot she'd like to accomplish with the gift of these next four years. We have known for 20 some years we needed a new city hall. But too much was going on to do it during term one. It's high on her term two list. And so is this. Would you like to see this soccer team make it happen here in the next four years? I really want Lexington Sporting Club to be here. They're, they're in the process of building their fields right now. And I'd like the stadium to be here. This would be good for Lexington. But none of it supersedes her desire to make good on the list that was hand delivered to her by the Commission for Racial Equality. I want to have all or as many as possible of my Commission on Racial Justice and Equality recommendations in place. And that seems more plausible with voters choosing to keep this mayor in place. In Lexington, Michael Burke for Evening Edition. Mayor Gorton also shared her political aspirations once her second term is over in 2026. And she shared the political office she was asked to consider years ago. If you'd like to see Michael's full interview with the mayor, we have that on our website, lex18.com.